Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Today's episode is going to blow your mind. Um, Let me tell you a little bit about the episode today. In this episode, Dr. Adil Khan unravels the secrets of regenerative medicine and takes us on a fascinating journey through the complexities of treating chronic diseases. He breaks down the barriers of conventional medicine, focusing on preventive approaches and treating root causes. We explore gene therapy's potential for chronic disease treatment and how copper peptides can be harnessed to restore cellular dysfunction. We'll also discover the advancements in mini circle technology, a game changer in gene therapy that could literally disrupt the pharmaceutical industry. Finally, we've entered into the realm of stem cells, the regenerative, anti-inflammatory, antifibrotic, and immunomodulatory functions, and how they can be applied to different medical conditions. You'll hear about the promise of gene-edited stem cells and how they're paving the way for more effective treatments. And as a bonus, we discuss the science behind meditation and its role in health and longevity. This is really a conversation you do not want to miss. Dr. Adil Khan completed his MD medical degree from the University of Ottawa in Canada. After training in sports medicine, he specialized in regenerative medicine, conducting one of the first Health Canada approved clinical trials with mesenchymal stromal cells. He's known internationally for treating many high profile celebrities and athletes driven by his passion to improve health. He co-founded Exalt and is the chief scientific officer of Science and Humans. He's also the chief medical officer for MiniCircle, the world's first reversible gene therapy. And you've got to stick around to the end of this episode when he talks about the thing that he is the most excited about, which I haven't even mentioned yet. So Dr. Adil Khan can be found, all of his work can be accessed at eterna.health. His Instagram account is instagram.com and he's just under dr.health. A con K H A N. And the website, once again, is eterna.health. We're hearing a lot about Dr. Khan these days, and I think we're going to be hearing a lot more. Before we jump into the episode, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you guys for your comments, for your feedback. Keep them coming. Send me your questions because I'm going to be hosting some Q&A episodes in the not too distant future. So the more questions you send me, the more I learn about what you want to know the better I can serve you in those Q&A episodes. If you love this episode, please make sure that you share it with friends, family, anybody that you know who you believe will also get value from it. And of course, if you're feeling inspired, by all means, do leave us a review on whatever platform you are listening to this podcast. And now without one more second's notice, let's jump into the episode. Hey folks, just a quick reminder that all of the information presented in this podcast is for information purposes only. No medical advice, no diagnosing, no treatments suggested here. Before you try anything that you hear about or learn about here, make sure that you check with your medical provider. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Today's episode is going to take us out to the future, but except we're here today. Um, And my guest, I'm super excited to welcome Dr. Adil Khan to the show. Dr. Khan, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I'm excited for a number of reasons. Number one, because the work that he does is unbelievably amazing. Number two, because he's from my hometown in Toronto. And for at least for the time being, we get to claim him in Toronto. Even though if you follow Dr. Khan on social media, if you think I travel, man, this guy puts me to shame. He's in Dubai one minute. He's off somebody. (laughs) He's all over the place. So we're going to talk about stem cells, gene therapy, regenerative therapies, we're going to dive into all of it. And Dr. Khan, he's the he's the surfer dude that's surfing the 50 foot wave like he's on the crest of that thing and he is flying. So welcome. And let's let's just dive in. Like what got you into this space? Like how did you become this cutting edge leader in this space? Uh, it's always a combination of right time, right place. But I think, but the motivation is important. I think to really tell my story. So, it, it, the problem with conventional medicine, and I and I identified this when I was in medical school, was basically like, hey, this is these are the diseases. This is the pathophysiology. This is the drugs you use to treat it. And this is if that doesn't work, then you can you know you could do surgery or whatever. Also, or and and then for me, it was always like, well, why aren't we learning how to prevent that? And why aren't we learning how to treat the root cause? And that was just a question I asked from day, like literally from day one. And that was probably just because I was a personal trainer and I was a fitness industry before I went into medicine. And so I always just had like a 
preventative mindset. And so it, it just didn't make sense to me. And so I started studying about integrative medicine, functional medicine, uh, while even though I was studying allopathic medicine, like med school was relatively, it's relatively easy. Like it's not hard to get, once you get the hard part is getting into med school, but once you're in there, it's pretty easy. And yeah. so you, you have a lot of free time. And so I had a lot of time to read other books and study health and nutrition and all the other stuff. And, and then, you know, I was naturally interested in kind of sports medicine just because I was always into working out. And uh, so I got attracted to that field and that's how I ended up in regenerative medicine because my mentor, Dr. Gallia, was kind of the pioneer in platelet-rich plasma. Yeah. And so he he pioneered that whole field. And, you know, he he was famous for treating like Tiger Woods and all sorts of other people um, because he started the whole PRP thing. And then, you know, he obviously is older now, so he's not really innovating anymore, which is fine. He's done his job. Uh, but then I kind of took the torch and I kept innovating with uh, stem cells and then now gene therapy and uh, the intersection of those two. But uh, that's how I got into it and super motivating because I've seen so many people I've been able to help and we've been able to help who otherwise were suffering and had no hope and no options. So it's, it's always the best feeling in the world to restore hope to people who've lost all hope. That's amazing. No, I love that. And I mean, Dr. Gallia also had his wrist slapped rather in an ugly fashion a few years ago. And so <laughs> I think in many ways, he, his, his appetite for innovation may be yeah. dampened a bit because, and mostly because he's being watched. Rather exactly. Than. Exactly. Yeah. And that's really what it came down to. And I, I have, a, I have, I've talked to more lawyers in the last few weeks. I've talked to my whole life. So I'm building a very robust team of them because unfortunately there is definitely going to be people who are going to be naysayers. And it, it's, and it's just, honestly, it's a typical thing though. Like I'm not, I'm expecting it because uh, I, I always think about like, you know, Galileo and like how he said the world is round and then everyone wanted to kill him because they said it's flat <laughs> and like, and like the scientists were against him. And even Einstein, when he proposed some of the theories of uh, general relatively, it went against like some of the physics community and they were against him. And so I, I think anytime you have someone who's any, whether it doesn't matter what it is, but there's always, there's always an established narrative. And anytime you go against that established narrative, you're always going to get pushed back and be, you, you might be called quacky and whatever. Uh, but that's, and some people are quacky, but some people aren't. Yeah. And being able to discern, being able to discern that fine, like you said, like surfing that wave, you being able to discern who is actually doing that properly and who's just like gimmick is a very like it's actually a hard skill to discern that, and a lot of people can't, and that's why there are a lot of charlatans in my space as well. Uh, but but then because of social media, it kind of democratizes who is actually the best and who is actually doing the right things because you know, I, I, I don't think the Royal families and the best athletes in the world and the biggest influencers in the world would come to me for treatment if I wasn't doing the right thing. You know what I mean? Well, um, they because they results. can choose anyone. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's about results because they can choose anyone and they, they're getting results and they're telling other people. Yeah. It's a hundred percent. And I think the results speak for themselves. I think what's, what's difficult is in this space of innovation and regeneration and all of the work that you do for whatever reason, the establishment sets the bar so much higher than it does for conventional treatments, which frankly, barely work a lot of the time, right? So they fall on their faces all the time. People die, things don't work. They have they have bad reactions and it's accepted. You're in yeah. this space here where you're dealing with stem cells and gene therapy and this and that. And one little thing goes sideways. Like I remember there was a doctor in the States and maybe she was offside, but she did something with stem cells in a woman's eye. The woman lost her vision. She sued her. It became a big mess. And it and it really played against stem cell therapy in the US for quite a long time. And and not that I'm saying that you should be able to make people blind, you know, do a treatment and person go blind and, and not have it looked into. But I feel like it's it's almost like the 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 game has to be played differently in this innovative space than it than gets played in the conventional space. Yeah. And it, it's it's actually to be honest, it, it should actually be the opposite, because yeah. if you if you look at chronic disease, uh then there's something called number needed to treat versus number needed to harm, which is kind of looking at how many people do you need to treat for this thing to actually do what it's supposed to do. And what's uh, what's like, it's basically a more sophisticated, more sophisticated way of looking at risk versus benefit. Yeah. And so, and so basically chronic disease, like for example, cholesterol, like statins, right? They're, they're the most, pres one of the most prescribed drugs. Their number needed to treat is actually very poor. It's like one in 200 something. So meaning you have to treat 200 people to actually have like the mortality and the benefits that you want. So it's not like everyone who takes a statin is actually getting the benefits that they think they're getting. So wow. chronic disease, so chronic disease manages it very different from acute care, which 
conventional medicine is beautiful at. Like if you, if you have appendicitis, you go to surgery and it's amazing. Like it's, there's no better place in the world to go than Western medicine for that. But the problem is a chronic care and chronic disease. Like you said, the pharmaceuticals are, are often have side effects, uh, unintentional side effects, and they have risks that we don't know about because taking drugs for 20, 30 years are going to deplete your body of certain nutrients or they're going to have effects downstream. They're going to affect si signaling processes that we don't always fully understand. And, and then you're like, Oh, whoops. Now we realize we should probably shouldn't have been on that for that long. And and then yeah. they guess you know they made 30 billion but they get sued for 5 billion and like they're still up uh that's like that's a game the pharmaceutical industry plays and uh it, it, that's just the way it is with chronic disease because that's the way they make the most of their money um but when it comes to when it comes to what we're interested in it's like can we actually solve the chronic disease from a cellular level because there's 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 an infinite number of you know, responses or, you know, insults that your body can have, but there's only a finite number of responses. So meaning that you, there's only so many molecular mechanisms at a cellular level that your body can have. And it, it actually comes down to like, most of them are what are called the hallmarks of aging. There's about 10 of them. There's like mitochondrial dysfunction, there's chronic inflammation, cellular senescence. Uh, and, and so the epigenetic alterations like telomere attrition, there, there's, but basically the point of the list is that at a cellular level, there's dysfunction occurring. And can we restore the cell to function normally using cellular reprogramming, gene therapy, cell therapy, uh, peptides, supplements, lifestyle, whatever it is. And those interventions often can re restore the health to restore the cell to normal function. And, 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 the, and the pyramid is becoming bigger and bigger. Like, you know, like 10 years ago, we only really had like nutrition and supplements and maybe some like early stages stem cell stuff. But now 10 years later, we have like we have like designer peptides, we have cell therapies, we have gene therapy, we have gene edited stem cell therapy. So you can get dog, you can, you can do something, there's something called CAR T, which is like a gene edited cell therapy for that can it cure leukemia and lymphoma. And, you know, it, it actually puts people in remission, um, but it's a gene edited cell therapy. So it's like kind of the next generation of therapeutics where you're getting down to a cellular level and you're actually restoring the function of the body. So, and that, and you know, the word remission or cure or treating people like that is it, not something that's known to the pharmaceutical industry because that's not good for their business, unfortunately. No, no, they put themselves out of business. Okay, let's talk about what you do. Let's let's dive into gene therapy, the gene editing therapy that you do. Um, like these, you know, this is so exciting, right? The thought that, I mean, you know, like someone with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, for example, someone with EDS, which is a genetic condition where a person is not, and there's different, types. Obviously, I, I don't think it's one thing. You've got your hypermobile person and you've got different things, but yeah. this is, these are, these are problems at a genetic level. And the thought that at some point someone might be able to identify, here's where the, here's where the problem is. And we can somehow edit that gene, reintroduce it into the body and have a different outcome is incredible because these are people who are dealing with right now symptom management and there's not even that much out there for them to manage their symptoms. So, and I know you've got, there's a couple that are already out there that are working really well. And maybe you, I don't know if you want to talk about those first. Yeah, no, I, I think it's super important for people to understand. And similar to what you were saying in regards to, you know, the setback that with the stem cell lady who went blind there was a setback in gene therapy research too because in the late 90s this boy he had some rare condition and they they used a viral uh gene therapy and unfortunately he died from it and so it's set to feel back almost like 20 years because they didn't mm. uh or not 20 years maybe 10 15 years and then and then they started actively picking up research again but the problem with viral gene therapies has always been they're very expensive to manufacture and there's always a risk of viral of a virus is going into your body and causing other unintended side effects or even death uh whereas and and then no one could really figure out how to do it with the bacteria uh until this company you know these scientists came along it's called mini circle uh this two scientists who invented it figured out a way to use a plasmid which is of bacterial origin it's just a but just a strand of dna hence the name mini circle it's just like a circular dna that yeah. can target that can basically target any peptide or enzyme in the body and so and it's and it's and it's reversible so meaning because it's a bacterial origin you can take an antibiotic and you can get it out of your body if you if you, if you so choose to but 
It also is not permanent. It lasts for about one and a half to two years, and then you can repeat it again, depending on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but the point is, it's a really cool technology because it, it has, A, it's reversible, B, it's a plasmid, so it's harmless. There's no actual foreign uh, back, risk of bacteria or virus going into your body. There is a little bit of foreign DNA going into your body, but that pl plasmid is very inert. It doesn't yeah. cause any, it doesn't cause translocation and it doesn't cause any risk of actually altering your DNA. Um, so it's a very, it's a very benign gene therapy when it comes to gene therapies. And that's why the technology is, is pretty incredible. Uh, and that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of their, I'm lucky to be part of the company. I'm not the scientist who invented it because I'm not that smart, but I was lucky enough to be, I'm their chief medical officer and I'm helping with R and D and developing other products. But the technology itself is, we our first product is called folostatin yeah and folostatin gene therapy the reason folostatin is such a cool molecule is it's been around for 20 years it's a peptide but the problem with peptides as a lot of people may know is they have a short half-life and so you have to often inject yourself multiple times a day to get the benefits and folostatin in particular you probably have to do two three times a day for like you know for a year or two years whatever it is to get the longevity and anti-aging benefits which is just not practical uh, and, but folostatin is such a great molecule because it inhibits myostatin which sets a limit on how much muscle you can put on so it's going to increase lean body mass and it's going to reduce muscle loss and we all know muscle is kind of the organ of longevity right mm -hmm. and so that's that's one component and then the other component it activates something called FOXO3 pathway, which reduces systemic inflammation, uh, which reduces, and, and we, as your immune system ages, inflammation, as it's kind of called, like a lot of people know chronic inflammation is the root of one of the biggest hallmarks of aging. Um, yeah. So if we can slow that down, then of course you can slow down aging. In mice, false and gene therapy has been shown to extend lifespan by 30%, so which is pretty, which is pretty remarkable right and so it's it's pretty exciting to have this gene therapy platform uh because we can make different products false is just the first one but then we're gonna you know you can you can do any you can do bpc tb4 you can have all these regenerative peptides that we're gonna make one for copper peptide for cosmetics but you just do one injection and it lasts for like one and a half to two years and then of course the the whole reason we're doing the longevity stuff first is because that's going to generate and cosmetics and generate more revenue so we can invest it and do the rare diseases um you know like cystic fibrosis retinitis pigmentosa there's some conditions where you're just missing a, a enzyme or protein and then you can target those and create gene therapies for those as well so there's gonna there's gonna be a lot of um a lot of hopefully pipeline that we're going to have to make a lot of innovation and help a lot of people. Uh, but it's also going to disrupt the pharmaceutical industry because a, we can, we can keep people healthier so they don't need to go on drugs hopefully and B and you, and you can reprogram your body in a sense and B you can actually make gene therapies for conventional pharmaceuticals as well. So for example, for cholesterol medication, there's one called PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, which is another alternative to statins for lowering your cholesterol, but you have to do the injection like every week. Um, so we can make a g gene therapy for it and you basically do one injection and instead of having to inject yourself weekly, you're good for one half to two years. And so what does it do? Because it the problem with statins, like, I mean, statins are problematic in a, for a whole bunch of reasons. And number one, as you said, it's one of the most prescribed drugs on the planet. And I feel like the moral compass on when to use it and how much to use it went, got thrown in the trash a long, long time ago. And so, you know, it can cause weakening of muscles. Like my dad ruptured his bicep tendon. You know, I would, it's not like he did anything spectacular. He wasn't picking up a car. Um, yeah. and he'd been on statins his whole, almost his whole life. Right. And so what would, what would a, what would a pep, what would this gene therapy involve? Like how would it, would it normalize cholesterol production or would it just, you well, it's, te it's technically, no, exactly. You want to have, you want to have the sweet, you want to have the sweet spot and, and cholesterol is a very, you know, you could do a whole podcast on that, but the gist of it is that there's something called fractionation and oxidation of cholesterol, yeah. meaning the different particle sizes. And if you're ox like, if you have the small dense ones that are oxidized, yeah. then you're at obviously higher risk of, but then also it has to be in a picture of chronic inflammation because mm -hmm. it's really the chronic inflammation that leads to the heart, that leads to what's called the unstable plaque rupture. Yeah. Um, and that's what causes heart attacks and strokes and all that stuff. So it's really the instability of the plaques. That's the problem. And why does that happen? Again, if you look at a cellular level of unstable, stable plaques, it has to do with chronic inflammation and the same hallmarks of aging that are underlie every disease chronic process. So it's like, it, it's, it's almost, it, I almost find it amusing at this point where it's just like, well, it seems like every chronic disease comes back to the same molecular mechanism. So if we can restore the bodies at these fundamental molecular mechanisms, we can fix most diseases, but that's not the way we were taught to think. We were taught to think system-based. And so it's a very, it's a very hard thing for physicians to understand. That's why a lot of doctors don't understand why I'm treating like, because we've treated inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis. We've treated patients with lupus. Like I'm not a rheumatologist, but 
I understand physiology and I understand how to apply stem cells in these contexts. And so, and because it's all about immunomodulation, which is changing the immune system signaling. And that's more than anything, I think the root of so many chronic diseases. So, so to your question about cholesterol, what is, what, what these treatments really do is that is are obviously just lowering it, but that's, it's a double edged sword because if you have too low cholesterol, that's important for synthesis of, for many things, including hormones, and it can affect yeah. increased risk of dementia and all sorts of things. Um, but, but we think the main way statins actually work is probably by just reducing inflammation. Um, so that's why they, they're benefit, potentially beneficial. But there's so many other ways to reduce in, inflammation that have less risk and could probably have similar benefits. Uh, and then also like the other one, the PCSK9, that's just decreasing the synthesis of cholesterol. So that's how, the, the way that works. Uh, and so similar type of principle, which is that it can lower your cholesterol, but is lowering cholesterol always a good thing? I, I, I think it's, I think it's more about reducing the state of the body, like the cellular state, right? Restoring yeah. cellular function. If yeah. if your body, if your body is not inflamed and you're very in your, you know, markers and everything are good and like, but there's ways to measure that too, uh, which aren't being done in conventional medicine at all. Then it's like, then you're at pro you're a very low risk of actually having some sort of heart attack or stroke. Right. And that's, there's so much data on that now, but again, the data, the clinical translation is 10 to 15 years behind, but there's been so much research, there's been recent papers coming out about what's called like looking at DNA methylation, CRP. Yeah. Uh, so looking at actual inflammatory CRP at the DNA, like DNA level. And that that's such a good predictor of these type of like chronic disease problems. Uh, but that's a test, like you can't, you, there's no family, family doctors don't even know what that is. So like, and, and then even cardiologists don't know what that is. So like, you obviously aren't going to have like, and that's why there's all these private health things popping up now because to be honest, if you want to get good healthcare and you want to actually have good primary preventative health, you, ha you have to go to people who are like actual experts in health, not experts in disease. Well, and, and people who, who didn't somehow have the curiosity crushed out of them in med school, right? People who came out of med school said, okay, I have a foundation of knowledge. Like people like you who came out with whatever foundation of knowledge and said, okay, what what ne like i have questions <laughs> you know like <laughs> th this doesn't make sense to me like what about this and what about that and this is how you're pushing the the you're just pushing the limits that were set by conventional medicine so okay so let's go back to gene therapy so folostatin is one where that talk to us a little bit about the what's the outcome so people have an easier time building lean muscle. That's going to have metabolic benefits. It's going to have physical benefits. Um, but there's cognitive benefits to that as well, is there not? Yeah, well, people have more energy and they have, generally speaking, they have uh, like better recovery. They have less systemic inflammation. Like a lot of our patients, which was not the intention of the clinical trial we did, like who had chronic pain, their chronic pain went away as well. Uh, really? because because it reduces chronic inflammation it reduces because again it, it comes down to inflammation and that's probably one of the and the immune system and that comes down to a lot of the drivers but the problem is like uh you know with, with targeting and restoring inflammation it is a it is a complex problem but if if you simplify it enough you can understand there's only so many processes that go wrong to kind of lead to that issue mm -hmm. and so you can if you restore those processes then you can actually fix that underlying problem and so that's why I, in the clinical trial that the phase one trial is going to be published soon but basically patients had increased uh lean body mass uh increased bone density which is important for women especially um I, yeah increased like um like less brain fog, better concentration, uh, more energy was the biggest, uh, one of the most consistent things. Like people feel more energy in the morning. Uh, so those are probably the most main benefits that people get. And then th there's an interest because we did DEXA scans on everyone for the yeah. study. And so it's very interesting because patients who were not exercising at all and not really eating a lot of protein, you'd think they would lose a lot of like, and they were dieting because they want to lose muscle while on the statin, but they lost no lean body mass. So it's very anti-catabolic. So people would just lose hundred wow. percent fat, which is very different from like Ozempic or mm -hmm. Monjoro or whatever, like peptide, like other peptides out there, which are, yes, they'll help you lose weight, but you're going to lose fat and muscle. And, well, and unless you feed the muscle and work it. I mean, the, the thing is there's ways to mitigate it, but you got to work yeah. it. Right. And mostly, and mostly, exactly. Like and a lot of people, a lot of people are just hoping like, yeah, I'm just going to start this injection and I'm just going to lose a lot of weight, which you might, but you're, you're losing good muscle as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and it sets you up for a fall when you stop using the, exactly. the compound. Exactly. So, all right. So how would, so let's talk about the copper peptide because GHKCU is super interesting peptide. People are all over it. I mean, it, it impacts 
what is it like over a thousand genes, right? It resets yeah. genes on the genome. And so do we know enough about what it's doing at an epigenetic level to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Well, that's why we, I think, I think, I think it was it's naturally existing in the body. Our, de exactly. our levels decline as we age anyway. So all exactly. you're really doing is restoring those levels, right? Exactly. And that's the same thing with follistatin. So, and that's why I'm, I'm super excited for our copper peptide gene therapy that I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm, the, between the false and copper gene therapy and the, my IV stem cells, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to age anymore. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, well, we'll if you need any test subjects on the GHK, <laughs> you, see, you know where to find me. I'm, I'm yeah. half an hour away. Well, we will we will definitely be doing a clinical trial for that because obviously we have to figure out the dosing and stuff. But um, and so yeah, sign me up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's what people said for the false stat when we fit the false stat gene trial. Once I started promoting it, we it filled up very quickly because uh, people are more than happy because the safety is already there, right? And the, yeah. once you understand the science. You're, what are you really injecting? You're injecting a peptide and a plasmid. Neither, and, and both of those are very safe and they're yeah. pretty, you know, so there's very low risk. And, uh, and yeah, uh, but a copper peptide, I think there's so many, I think the biggest benefit, I, like you said, there's so many cellular benefits, but w it, the problem is like, you know, you can overcomplicate things and obviously talk about like a million different mechanisms, but I think you just come back to the 10, like I say, like the 10 guiding principles, the fundamental principles of cellular dysfunction, uh, which would kind of, I mentioned a few of them earlier, which is yeah. like, how does copper peptide restore those different cellular dysfunctional patterns? And it, and it does, it modifies all of them at a cellular level. What they, I don't, I don't, actually, I don't know, but like maybe not telomere attrition. I don't know if it does that one, but Definitely chronic nutrition. Yeah, but definitely chronic like, inflammation and my health with mitochondrial health and helps with so many other things, right? Yeah. And, and the other, you know, the other you can use it for cosmetics. Like we actually have we have our own cream, which maybe I should get you a sample of. We have a copper peptide cream. It's the highest. It's, it, we spent we have a compounding pharmacy who makes it for us uh, because it's the highest like concentration uh, in the world for that. But it's basically it's good for wrinkles, right? Mm hmm. So, yeah, although my experience with the topicals and there's, you know, there's some good stuff and I would love to try your cream. I'm I'm all in. Uh, you don't even have to send it to me. I'll come pick it up. But um, and I don't get to say that on podcast very often. <laughs> Usually I'm talking to someone who's in a different country, but um is it's getting it through. It's getting it, it into the. Yes. Deeper so I usually recommend micro needle. You do micro needling yeah. and then apply. Yeah, okay. for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So perfect. Um, all right. So let's, so that's, that's one area of super exciting, amazing stuff. Let's talk about stem cells and regenerative and not just regenerative, because let's start from the chronic disease side and move our way up. Right. Because I will often say you can't optimize from, from being sick. You need to get yourself body to homeostasis. You need to kind of resolve those chronic issues. And then we can start talking about how do we get younger and move the needle beyond what's normal for lack of a better word. Yeah, so, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about stem cell therapy and chronic disease. Like, and you mentioned a few before you talked about lupus and I can't remember maybe MS. So yeah, there's so, some work yeah. in that area as well. Oh, rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. So I think, I think the easiest way to understand like what a stem cell really is, think of it just like the building blocks. Like if you have a, if you're trying to build a house, like what, what does it take, right? It takes, it takes framing. It takes like, you need wood, you need all these different components to it. Right. And so, um, that's kind of like the stem cells are like building blocks to make the house, which is to, and say the house is a cell and to, how do you restore that cell is by having those building blocks that will help to restore the cell to its previous state. So the whole kind of trademark of or regenerative medicine or the promise of regenerative medicine was, can we repair or restore tissue back to a previous state? Mm -hmm. So meaning state before the chronic disease or before the injury. So a perfect example would be like, if you have like a rotator cuff tear, can we restore that back to a previous state without surgery? Yes. And now we know there's, that's just like, that's just like now that's been done thousands of times, millions of times now um, with, you know, PRP and stem cells and stuff. And so that's just like, like a fact of life, but even, even some people are still skeptical of that, which is just baffling to me. Yeah, it's but, been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and but now but now it's like can we go to the next step which is like can we restore chronic disease back to a previous state mm -hmm. which is obviously a lot more complicated than just a rotator cuff tear yeah. and that that's where it becomes like you have to go back to like in physics they call it first principles but in bi in biology you can call it like fundamental principles like like we we're talking about it always comes back to what are the fundamental principles governing the cellular dysfunction uh which which comes back to those hallmarks of aging and how do you restore the cell through that which but it's 
it's it's not as simple. If it was so simple, you could just take omega three, vitamin D, do some lifestyle stuff, and you could cure chronic disease. It's not that simple, right? Uh, obviously, it's very complex, and so because and that's where you need more and more advanced treatments, and that's where I think the cell therapies are very powerful because at a cellular level, they affect all those different hallmarks of aging, and they help to restore cell dysfunction, and that's why they can treat so many different chronic diseases. Now, in terms of like how stem cells work. I think a lot of people have a misconception that stem cells are going to like, you know, are these amazing like little things that can rebuild anything. It's not quite like, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, they're, they're more than anything. They're signaling molecules. Yeah. Um, you signal to your body, to your own body stem cells and to, to work with your immune system to change the signaling profile. So the number, the stem cells have four functions, regenerative, anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic and immunomodulatory. Now, Antifibrotic just means it helps with fibrosis, scarring. So that's why you can use it for liver fibrosis. You can use it even for heart failure after heart attacks. You can use it for even pancreas for there's so many cool applications for organs now. Uh, and then obviously there's a regenerative component, anti-inflammatory, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then immune modulation is the really is a fancy word. But basically what it really means is it's just reprogramming your immune system to work properly. Because I, always, I, I, I my, my analogy is the immune system is like a teenage it's like a teenager. And so and, and it means like it's going to rebel if you don't train it properly. And mm -hmm. the, the, and the immune system likes to rebel in a lot of people. And in fact, I would say more often than not, now in society, it rebels in so many people because it gets all the wrong inputs throughout its life. So uh, can you blame it? Like, yeah. it's just like, eat the I wrong love that analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it works very well because... And because and, and it, it works even better because if you go back down, if you if you train the teenager at a younger age to train it properly, then it will behave properly when it's older. But if you don't train it properly, then you're going to have a misbehaving teenager and a misbehaving immune system, which is going to attack itself or cause chronic inflammation where it shouldn't be. And then that's going to lead to all these different e issues. So when you come back to the fundamental principles, can we like, and I'm always about prevention. It's like, how do we prevent this from happening to the next generation? Our generation is pretty screwed. Uh, like we're even millennials, like we're, we're health, health problems are an epidemic. Like I've, I've seen so many people in their twenties and thirties who have like chronic diseases and have like osteoarthritis. Like this is, it's very unusual. Like it's not like, I don't think that was a normal thing 30 years ago. Um, like, and so what, why is that? It's because we grew up with like all these crappy foods. We were told a lie basically growing up about, about food and like about like everything about health related. And so unfortunately some people's body didn't have the resiliency to deal with all that. And so now they have all these chronic diseases and autoimmune conditions and they go to their doctor who just says, Oh yeah, I guess you have this condition. So you got to take this pill for the rest of your life. So, you know, that's just, that's just luck of the luck of the straw. Like that's not, that's, that's not it at all. And so it's more, it's, it has so much to do with the inputs that they had and like, you know, antibiotics, C-section, like stress, like uh, food that's depleted of, depleted of like nutrients because the soil is depleted. Like there's so many factors, like lack of sunshine, like there's just a million different things that are yeah. wrong. People, the way people live. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. So, okay. So let me ask you a question and I, I'll bet you there's a few people scratching their heads about this. So we have stem cells, right? And let's say we want to, what's the difference in treatment from one thing to another? Because in many ways, like the beauty of the stem cell is it's essentially pleiotropic, right? It can do all kinds of different things. It's a very versatile unit that, as you said, it, it, it does, it has four different functions that seem to be fairly universal. But so how do you introduce a stem cell treatment differently to someone who's got a pancreas that needs regeneration? versus a person who's got rheumatoid arthritis versus a person who's got lupus. Now, RA and lupus, they're more closely aligned, let's say, but do you, or stem cells for cognitive, right? You've got neurodegenerative diseases. There's some really interesting work being done around stem cells in that, and in that area. So are the stem, do the stem cells have to be introduced directly into the space or is there a way to direct the stem cell to the- Oh, well, yeah, stem cells- so intravenous stem cells, um, when I, you know, when I first learned about them, I thought, I, I thought that was hogwash. Like, I was like, that sounds like nonsense. And then <laughs> but I actually didn't believe, I actually didn't even believe it for like the longest time. And then as I studied it more and I got into it and then I saw the, and then once I started doing it myself on patients and saw the results, then I was obviously sold. Um, but the reason intravenous stem cells work for so many different conditions. And as you said, like, it's, it's a, it's a hard way to, it's hard to grasp your head around that. It's like, how can you use intravenous stem cells for so many different conditions mm -hmm. is because what's the root cause of most of these conditions that comes back. We'll go back to the same thing. That's amazing. Well, right. 
So that's why. And that's and and to your point about can we use different treatments for different like different organs? Yes, you can, because now we have the second generation of stem cells, which we're just in the process. We have we've licensed them out. Our company has them and we're developing more, but they're called gene edited stem cells. So it's called IPSC derived MSCs. Uh, it's a mouth load, but it means induced pluripotent stem cells, uh, which and then uh, you can have you can have IPSC derived MSCs, which are mesenchymal stem cells, uh, which are like the most uh, common ones that we use because mesenchymal stem cells are very safe and they're, they've been, there's over a thousand studies on them, but that's like usually derived from umbilical cord tissue. But now what you can do is you can gene edit, you can use, you can take a cell and you can reprogram it into a naked stem cell. So you can take any cell in your body. It, it sounds like science fiction because it, it really is. But the guy who he won a Nobel prize for it, is he's a Japanese researcher, Yamanaka. He basically found these four transcription factors. If you oh, over factors. Yeah, yeah. The Yamanaka factors. Yamanaka. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you over, if you basically uh, overexpress these transcription factors, it will take any cell back into a naked stem cell, which is basically an embryonic stem cell. But the problem with embryonic stem cells, unlike mesenchymal stem cells, is that they have the risk of uncontrolled proliferation. So they can cause tumors or teratomas, and they can actually risk of cancer, whereas mesenchymal stem cells have zero risk of that. So no one could figure out how do we use, we have this amazing technology that Yamanaka discovered, but we can't actually use it clinically because it's dangerous. So how can we, so no one can figure that out until there's a company, actually it's, it's in Toronto, crazy enough, the research the science is called Pancilla, and they have a patent on using IPSC cell lines, but they have a gene edited IPSC cell line. So it has a, what's called a suicide gene kill switch if you do get uncontrolled proliferation. So it, it will stop that. Um, so basically there's no risk, so then there, you don't have the risk of having uncontrolled cell growth. So, but then the cool thing is because you have gene edited IPSCs, you can create, and they can create different cell lines. So they have one for islet cells. So for example, you get the islet pancreas. cells, pancreas, exactly. And then you can have neural crest cells that you can use for spinal cord injuries and the brain and Parkinson's and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then you can create obviously MSCs that are enhanced for osteoarthritis. And so you can create different cell lines that are gene edited to overexpress the transcription factors you want for whatever disease you're trying to target. So it's like a pre-programmed stem, like the, yeah. it's like a tactical squad. Exactly. It's more you're not where sending in just the infantry. You're tend sending in the exactly. So the first, the first generation of stem cells, which is what 99% of clinics are still using, is just mesenchymal stem cells, which are still good and efficacious, and I still use them too. But now we have the next generation, which is gene edited stem cells. And because our technology with the mini circle tech, what I was talking about earlier, we're actually using that to apply to. We're making our own line of gene edited stem cells using that technology as well, because that technology is really you can because of the way it works, it's very precise. It, um, I would I would argue you it's you know it, it well in some ways it's actually better than CRISPR because the mini circle technology is is more precise than CRISPR um because Cas9 is the CRISPR like the famous gene editing technology but it's not always perfect because it can have offsite targets um whereas this this gene therapy the mini circle one the plasmid has no offsite targets so you can use it to target you can basically use it to gene edit the cells the way you want so we're we have a whole bunch of you know, uh, pipeline products for cell gene edited cell therapies that we can create for different conditions for like us for, and then that way it's not just like mesenchymal stem cells. We have, we, Hey, you need a stem cell for OA. You need a stem cell for RA. You need a stem cell therapy for, uh, Alzheimer's, whatever it is. So it's going to be very exciting over the next few years wow. to develop all these different cell lines. That's incredible. That's so crazy to even think about that. So tell me this. So you, you're injecting, so you're introducing into the body these gene edited stem cells. And so do they do they actually embed in all the stem cell in all the cells in that target? Or do they well that's somehow, that's the biggest by, by chemical messaging, do they re reprogram? Sorry. Yeah, the biggest issue is engraft engraftment, which is like survival of the stem cells. Um, and the survival is still a fickle issue. And like, there's, you know, controversy about how many do them actually survive. Um, but, um, and, and a lot of them, I think currently may not survive, but like for long, because they want, they're not causing true engraftment, but what they're doing is they're, again, they're doing that signaling change, mm -hmm. which, and that sends your body's own stem cells, which allow you to regenerate new tissue still. So you can still get, because like, there, for example, there's a study that just came out with like type one diabetes, and they were able to get a lot of patients off insulin, injecting stem cells into the pancreatic arteries that feed into the uh, pancreas. And so, and and it's long term, like they did, they had long term follow up and whatnot. And so, how how is that possible if you're not growing new islet cells? Like, there, so there must be some regenerative component to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there is definitely some cell viability and engraftment that's happening. But to increase the engraftment is a like kind of hot topic of research. And so. 
Um, one way to do that is using the gene edited cell lines because then you have more specific cell lines for whatever problem you're trying to solve. So you can have better survivability. Uh, and then you're also going to have uh, what are called hydrogels, which is like hydrogel are like little, little, almost like little scaffolds, but the stem cells get embedded in them and then increases the survivability of the stem cells. And then because you have this like hydrogel scaffold, the stem cells can survive in there and then they can actually regrow the new tissue. Um, so that's what, so we're working on, we have, a, I have a company from Switzerland I'm working with, they have a 3D bioprinting technology. And basically we're, we're working on creating 3D bioprinted stem cell embedded scaffolds. <laughs> okay. And so this is how you could essentially potentially down the road or maybe already save someone from having to get a hip replacement or a knee replacement. Exactly. Replacement. exactly. You could resurface. You could re and yeah. that's, that's what I mean. There's actually a group in Washington University uh, in St. Louis. Uh, they're doing it's Farshad Gilead's group. He, they're actually doing that already. And they're trying to get FDA approval now. Um, but FDA will take probably forever. So I'm just going to do it. My, I'm just, we're just doing it ourselves in uh, offshore. So because we have the technology and we know how to do it. So, or people with, uh, with the generation in their discs. Like how amazing is that? Like to actually be able to generate tight, right? Which is we, we'll be able to do that in the next like two years for sure. That's incredible. Well, it's funny, you know, I inter I interviewed a, a guy, Bill Lawrence, a few a couple of years ago now, and he was talking about, we need to make it to the bridge because there's so much of this stuff is coming down the pipes. Like you're saying, you know, in the next two years, the the main, his, his thing is keep yourself as healthy as possible and as in good shape as possible so that as these things are coming down the pipes, you can avail yourselves, yourself of them. And we are the generation and my generation is like at the leading we're, we're it's going to be some of us will make it and some of us won't um be there in time like last long enough to be able to avail ourselves of some of these regenerative strategies like but as you said like the the joint stuff's already happening yeah it's and I, I think available yeah and i mean even the like the gene therapies, like the false that like that can hopefully you know extend lifespan make people healthier um so it, for me it it can be an amazing population-based intervention to keep everyone healthier because there's no side effects and just so many benefits. Um, so that's that's kind of like the vision with all these is to democratize health so everyone has access to it. But the problem with any technology, just like TVs are the best easy example that everyone can relate to. Like an LED plasma TV 10 years ago or 15 years ago used to cost like $100,000 for like a crazy nice TV. Now you can get for like couple thousand dollars. And so it's, a, and so it's just like, so it's the same thing now, right? The, right now it is expensive and it, it's not accessible to everyone, but I believe, I, and I, I, it's not, I believe it's just, it's a fact that there's, there's Moore's law. So there's innovation and there's always going to be cost curve reductions and it's, and it's just capitalism. There's going to be more people doing it and there's gonna be more innovation and the price is going to come down and be more affordable to everyone. Yeah. So that's, that's fascinating. So are you working on, like, what else are you working on? What are you excited about? Like, I don't even know what to ask you because, I mean, I do know what to ask you. I've asked you the stuff that I know, but I know enough about you to know. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm What's working on a lot. stuff you're working on? But what, Have I? One or two. Well, I, th I think the biggest, uh, I think the one that's actually going to have the most impact, like worldwide, probably, um, because it's the root of so many issues, is going to be our, like FMT capsules. So the poop pills. Uh, because FMT capsules are so bad now because FMT used to technically, you can only do it through a colonoscopy and it was a very laborious procedure and again, not very accessible. Um, and it traditionally only used it for C. diff, which is like an infection that, you know, back to, after antibiotics and it like destroys your colon. And so that you have to repopulate the gut. Uh, and so that's what the fecal microbial transplant does, which is just introducing healthy poop uh, and healthy bacteria to repopulate your gut. Um, and we know 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Mm -hmm. So... So, and if we're, if we've talked about this whole podcast about the immune system and how important that is. So if we can slow down that aging process of the immune system, FMT, I think for anti-aging and longevity is going to be massive, but also for so many people who have gut issues and have other chronic disease, like even Parkinson's, par who would have thought Parkinson's is linked to is a gut bacteria? Like, like who would have ever thought that? Right. And so yeah. I just. I, now I just say my saying is gut everything access, mm -hmm. gut brain access, gut disc access, gut joint access, gut pancreas access. It communicates with everything, and so it, it your gut is really the root of so many so much dysfunction. And, and restoring the gut is not as easy as people think. And like again, it, it's like different levels, right? Like if you're yes, maybe if you have like mild issues, you can restore it with like natural protocols, probiotics, digestive enzymes, all that stuff. But for a lot of people with chronic disease, that's not enough. 
Um, so you really need a therapeutic to restore and populate the gut. And so FMT capsules, Tom, Br Thomas Brody, he was actually like the pioneer of it. He's like the, he's like the OG godfather of, uh, GI and he was the one who gastroenterology. So he was the one who actually discovered H pylori. So he's, yeah. um, from Australia. And so he, he makes FMT capsules, but he has like a two year wait list to get them. So why, so why, why, why? And where is he getting the poop from? Like how do yeah, we he has a whole process of like donate donor screening and all that stuff. He's, he, he's, he has a really good process. So, so because we, we were like, well, this can help millions of people and it's so hard to get. So why don't we just make our own? So we're manufacturing them ourselves. And we have, I have a microbiome, a human, like a microbiome specialist. She's a PhD scientist in that. And she has her own IP because she did a PhD in this and she has a whole, her own I, like IP on making the capsules and like how to formulate them and like to get, how to get the best, how to select for the best donors and all that stuff. But then even FMT, this is the first generation of FMT. She said, should we have a whole pipeline of FMT products where you can again, have FMTs for different conditions? I was so, say, yeah, yeah. So I, FMT, to me, FMT to as, as weird as it sounds, I'm, I'm most excited about poop pills because of its ability <laughs> to because of its ability to help, I think, because it's so scalable and it's yeah. so it's so access, it'll be very accessible. It won't be super expensive, like it'll, it, you know, and it's it's like super duper probiotics that in in mice again, it's been shown to extend lifespan by thirty percent, like FMT uh, transplants. So it, there's longevity, anti aging benefits, plus it it can help so many people who are suffering with chronic like anything, chronic any disease, pretty much. Well, and I think that so much of the mental health issues that we're Back. seeing now, which are beyond epidemic at this point right like it's it's i don't think you could walk down the street stop 10 people and at least half of them have some kind of mental health issue going on and i think the gut has so much to do with that it's such it, a it really it really is and it's it's uh it, it's you know and somehow still like i mean people are waking up to it again but um somehow Again, the drug industry convinced everyone that's just a chemical imbalance and that's all we have to treat, uh, which is so far from the truth. And it's maybe maybe a small part of the problem. But even then, like if you look at all the data, like if you look at all the negative results from the trials, like most SSI, they're just like placebo. Yeah. And so and so, yes, it does help, but it's, it helps as much as like a placebo. So then it's like, what are you what are we really doing? And we're and we're causing so many so much harm with these drugs because they have risks with them. Mm -hmm. And so. It's a, and that's why I think, again, like that's why I think um, psychedelics are going to completely disrupt the psychiatric industry because they actually fix people <laughs> and actually, actually get to the root cause, which is often tra unresolved trauma and all that stuff. But then I think FMT can support that as well because it, it's a addressing a different mechanism and different part of it. Uh, because as we know, just like most conditions, there's multiple drivers of disease. It's not just chemical imbalance. It's also neuroinflammation. It's also the gut brain access and like the serotonin receptors in the gut and how they communicate with your body. Right. So there's, there's all these different components to actually treating mental health, which is not done at all. And that's actually, I, I had a video I just posted, which I mean, it, it's gotten a little bit viral, I guess on TikTok, it's gotten like 300,000 views in the last two days. And it's just like, it was just about, it was just about literally, it was just about me talking about why I'm treating mental health, even though I never wanted to really treat mental health because of, I'm not, again, it's not my specialty, but there's all these patients who weren't getting better and like just suffering. And I, I came across the, the vagus nerve and cellic ganglion and which are, there's something called cellic ganglion block they use for PTSD. Oh, I saw that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so it's, uh, and so basically, but what it does is such a powerful tool for anxiety and for people with mental health, because a lot of mental health is actually rooted in unresolved trauma, emotional trauma, um, and, and like, or like what's what are called adverse childhood events. And so uh, a lot of people never deal with that root cause. And so their nervous system is all haywire. And so the vagus nerve is kind of the master regulator of your central nervous system and how it sends signals. So we can modulate that using peptides. And then by modulating the vagus nerve, it actually almost like resets the nervous system and it, it makes people feel more calm. I've had people say their panic attacks are cured in, in the first time in their life they i have teenage girls i've done it for who like couldn't function and can function now so it just it's, it's crazy and it's just with one injection <laughs> like it takes like That's 10 minutes great. and how long does it last i well it's, it's changing the signaling profile so as long as you maintain it with like therapy obviously lifestyle stuff like then yeah. it, you should so you still have it. to do the work you still exactly have you have to, to you there's no magic to fix the work. no magic yeah. cure anything so every, everything comes back to fundamentals, which is like, men, let, let's call it physical therapy and mental therapy. Those are yeah. the fundamentals of life, right? And most people 
don't invest into like enough people are probably investing into physical health now. They understand exercise is important, um, but mental therapy is still very undervalued. Um, like, you know, most people probably need some sort of like, I think everyone could benefit from like a therapist or a life coach or something, you know? What do you think? <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> that, that in some form of FMT. I mean, I think, you know, what I think is fascinating is that you're able to find any donors at this point because. Well, luckily we're, we, we yeah, we have rural, we're going to very rural areas in like certain places that have, yeah. that don't have access to processed foods and a lot of other things. Um, so, and my, my stem cell sign, uh, scientist, she's very careful and she has a whole process the way she's selecting them. So, uh, so yeah, she, she knows exactly how to do it to make sure they're good donors. And so how long before the FMT is available or is it already available? No, it, it should be available by end of the year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, so you're most excited about poop pills, and I I totally get why. I'm I you know there's a woman that I interviewed I'm not like that the, long. The, like the gene therapies and cell therapies, I guess, but it's well, also. I mean, gene therapies are super cool, but but you know to be excited about poop pills is is kind of funny, and yet it's just so basic. Exactly. Right, it's like a, it's it's so like, basic, like it's not even out of a lab. I mean, it is out of a lab because you got to clean it up and do all the things, yeah. but. But it's it's Mother Nature saying, I got the answer here. All you got to do is re Well, one it. thing one thing I've learned studying and being obsessed with health is that our body has everything it needs to heal and age very well. And it's just we have to send it the right signals. And that's yeah. that's what we're doing. We're just modifying signaling processes with cell therapy, gene therapy, even the poop pills. It's just mod modifying the environment to allow you to age well and live a healthy and long life. Uh, yeah, and, and and if you want to delay aging, it's the same principle. It's just like how do we reprogram the body to change the signaling pro, uh, like the signaling uh, profiles, uh, and and that's why the that transcription factors are so interesting with the Amanaka factors because what is what is he really doing? He's just taking transcription factors that are known in the body and overexpressing them, and then that causes your body to go back into a baby state, basically, which is crazy. Yeah, that is means your nice. body your body has your body has this a crazy memory inside of it to always stay young, mm -hmm. so. I think one day, like I know it's, it sounds weird, but I, I, I do think one day, like we'll be able to test the limits of aging to like, who knows, like maybe, I don't know if it could be infinity, but it could definitely be like hundreds of years or more than that. Yeah. Well, that'll bring with it a whole new set of problems. So we'll have to, we'll have <laughs> to cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, if we can help people to stay healthier longer, yeah, I think right away or reverse these chronic diseases or you know, address the suffering that is, that is taking place. That's a massive leap. Exactly. Like, that's why, and that's why I'm, step. that's why I'm so excited about the poop pills. Cause I, 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 my genuine motivation for all this was always just to help more people. That's why I started social media as well. Uh, just to reach more people. And I, I think poop pills can help a lot of people. <laughs> so I really, and it's, it's just, it's, it's so simple and silly, but they can change so many lives. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super exciting. I, I can't even imagine that I'm even excited about poop pills because, you know, it's not something I've ever, I mean, I get really excited about peptides, but I think peptides similarly, again, they're, they come from the body. Like it's not, nobody's invented these, right? These are. Think about umbilical cord stem cells, like the the ones we use, where yeah. just, they literally, it's just the nature, it's the nature of life. We're just yeah. taking I think every, I think I really am like of the belief everything we need to heal our bodies when it comes to chronic disease, at least has been given to us. And yeah. it's just a matter of us figuring out what that is, what, yeah. what transcription factors, what gene therapies, what peptides, whatever. And these are all things that just are stimulating your body in the right way to keep you going. A hundred percent. Well, Dr. Khan, this, you know, I don't want to overstay my welcome here, but I, what's the last thing you want to share with the audience? I mean, we could sit here. I could sit here with, I don't know if you could sit here, but I could sit here with you for a bit. I could. I love, I love so. talking about this. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I can talk about it all day. So it's just, uh, it's, it's my uh, passion. I yeah. think the biggest, uh, obviously for health and longevity, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a million things, but I think the, one of the most underrated that people don't value maybe as much as they should is meditation. Um, yes. a lot of people meditate, but they don't really get into the practice of like, how do you actually meditate so that it has those benefits at a cellular level? And uh, that can take a bit of work and that can take even having a coach or having someone to teach you how to do it. But I do think similar to learning how to exercise properly, you need to learn how to meditate properly. Uh, it's just so important for our minds. And uh, again, we're, it's, we're, we're creatures of evolutionary biology and we have this programmed into our body for 
for some reason, I think, I think probably to connect ourselves with whatever the greater purpose is. And in some way or another, we're all connected, I think. And we have this energy about life and that we can't purely measure, but meditation allows us to get back into that. Uh, and so I think that's so important. I love that. So, okay. So a question about meditation in your mind, is there a meditation, like a style of meditation that's more beneficial or are we talking transcendental meditation or? I think for most people, just having guided meditation is the easiest, most accessible thing because most people have monkey mind, which yeah. is, you know, and they can't tame it. And so having someone to guide you through that process, like I'm not saying go on like a two week meditation retreat because you'll probably go crazy. But because I just you had a friend who, up to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just had a friend who did that. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I, I like that's something I couldn't even do. I don't think. But just it's <laughs> a, silent meditation for 10 days. He did it. And, and I was just like, wow, that's that's wild. Uh, but I, I but he said he feels he feels so much more connected. And he's he's probably one of the smartest people I know. And he's just like, He's an inventor, actually, of the mini circle technology. So he um, he's a scientist, super bright guy, and he uh, but he's he, he says meditation just it clears his mind, you know. And doing those ten days just really makes him focus and connect with everything better. Uh, and that's how I I feel too, just doing it on a daily basis. But I think that's why a lot obviously religions have prayer and all that stuff too, because mm -hmm. it's it's supposed to be a form of meditation, right? And so whether you do it through prayer or whether you do it through actual formal guided meditation, it doesn't really matter, but just do something that makes you more present and aware and connected with everything that's around you. Adil, that's amazing. Thank you. I, I love that, right? Something that people can take. As a matter of fact, isn't meditation one of the few ways that we know of that isn't an intervention that can elongate telomeres? Exactly. <laughs> right? So there's there's actual science behind it. So thank you so much. Why don't we share with people where they can find you um, and follow your incredible work? Yeah, I, on Instagram, I'm, very, I'm pretty active. It's just at dr.akon, K-H-A-N. And uh, I, TikTok is a whatever. I, I, I never thought <laughs> I would. It is what it is. Uh, and it's actually been really, I mean, it's generated a crazy amount. I've like, I'm so many patients. Are, I'm like, how did you find me? They're like, TikTok. I'm like, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> so it's just the regen on the TikTok, I'm the regen doc. Uh, the regen so, doc. And yeah. so if people want to inquire about treatment with you, I know that getting through to you is a firewall at this point. I know that you're probably like being inundated with requests from people. But um, if someone I have a big team and I've trained I've trained many doctors to be like the, to do what I do uh, at okay. the same level. And so I think when it comes to most things, they can treat that. Obviously, there are certain things only I can treat and those patients will come to me for those. Uh, but there are most of the things that my team can treat. So we have our brand is called Eterna, um, like eternal without an L. And so yeah. just Eterna is our company. But if you just Eterna.health is our website and uh, you can you can just literally go on there and you can refer yourself and get a, a consultation and all that stuff. Amazing. I love it. Well, Thank you so, so much for this. Um, no problem. I so appreciate your yeah. time. It's been great. I mean, I loved meeting you in person and I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you again and weaseling my way into that. Gene. Yeah, getting you, getting you the, 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 we call it Botox in a bottle cream. We'll get well, you that I'm cream. I'm all in for the Botox in a bottle cream, but I also want the plasmid GHK thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.